Kelly, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So how have you guys been doing? I'll start there. So it's been it's been a journey the past, uh, I guess, six to eight months now. Um, all things considered, I mean, we're doing well. We're trying to push things forward in the industry. It's been um, a challenge for all aspects of the industry and the natural resources in Canada. So we've really been, you know, looking at economic recovery moving forward and also some kind of key pieces at the beginning um, of COVID-19 when it hit in, in March. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good stuff. So community engagement, can you kind of take us a little bit through what your primary role is with the Canadian Association of uh, Petroleum Producers? <laughs> yes, most definitely. So uh, we do have a team under communications at CAP that does um, a wide range of outreach activities across Canada. So I am based in Calgary, which is where our, our head office is, and I do community relations for Western Canada, so Saskatchewan, uh, Alberta, and British Columbia. And really what it looks like is working with municipal municipalities on uh, policy issues and also uh, the business communities as well. So chambers of commerce, rotary clubs, uh, and other kind of economic development organizations that are looking to, um, you know, progress Canada's economy. Awesome. So speaking about progressing Canadians' economy, uh, what are some of the key messaging you guys are working on right now? And, and what do you feel is some of the messaging that needs to get out there in regards to the challenges that we've had with yeah. the oil and gas industry here in Alberta and in Canada? Yeah, most definitely. So uh, when March hit and COVID-19 kind of began, CAP was looking at three main buckets. So we were looking at liquidity. So really, you know, looking at finance options for members and across the sector, uh, you know, support for our essential services. So workers keeping our operations going and then also red tape reduction. So, uh, you know, taking critical steps in the regulatory framework to make things more efficient. So that's what we were really focused on in the first kind of, I guess, phase one, we can call it of COVID. Now we're really looking at economic recovery. So uh, that looks at, you know, policy to kind of minimize the GDP uh, to debt ratio in Canada, which we're looking at about a 43% increase this year. So pretty significant, um, as well as getting people back to work and making sure that, um, you know, we're not just stabilizing um, the deficit that we have, but also kind of moving forward into a path of recovery. Mm. So um, a big part of that is moving not just shovel ready projects forward, but also shovel worthy pro uh, projects, which we really feel is, uh, is something that our industry uh, has and can contribute to the economy in a very big way. And I guess I would just add by saying that uh, in 2019, our GDP contribution um, in Canada was about 6.1%, so a very significant part of the Canadian economy. Uh, and, you know, we feel that oil and gas is a, um, a significant player in moving the economy forward. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to your messaging, are we looking at, uh, you know, you're, I mean, you're look, really looking at growth. I mean, you said to yourself, we don't want to just, you know, uh, stabilize that deficit, but we want to start looking at moving us yeah. forward so we can start putting back and getting getting growth again. So are we looking at uh, more foreign investments? Uh, is, is that kind of like, a, a, and, and what are we doing internally as well to keep sustainability so we can kind of support ourselves maybe a little bit outside of foreign investments? Is that kind of something that's been batted around in, in conversations? So foreign investment is definitely a big part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, the areas that we're looking at that in Canada right now, uh, just as an example, is LNG and um, exporting LNG. So, you know, in terms of kind of that foreign scope, we are really looking to build our export economy. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going to minimize that GDP to debt ratio. Uh, LNG is a huge part of that. And, uh, you know, it's important to mention that this is not just an Alberta story. Mm -hmm. You know, energy is is. Canada wide and one thing that COVID has really done is, is amplify the fact that this is a very big country. Uh, a lot of us are very far away from our families and transportation is a big part of that. And there's also a lot of connectivity between the, the industries. So, um, you know, developing LNG or liquid natural gas project 
projects, as I mentioned, is, is happening in British Columbia. Um, production in Alberta is contributing to that, as well as in the eastern provinces, so Ontario, Quebec, and uh, Atlantic Canada as well. So um, that's one area that we're looking at to, uh, to export to Asia. Of course, the Trans Mountain Expansion Project, that pipeline is in construction right now, so that's been a great stable employer uh, in Alberta and also in British Columbia, and that represents another great export opportunity to Asia, which, um, you know, to put this into perspective right now, we have about 95% of our exports going to the United States, so diversifying kind of our export playing field is very important, and these are some of the projects that are, are gonna do that for us. Awesome. And I mean, both Alberta and Canada has really taken a whooping here in the last, not just last year, not just since COVID, but we're talking the last four or five years. Yeah. And so now, does that correlation uh, with, uh, or does that correlate with policies? And what are some of the things in the policy realm that we need to change to kind of, again, change the narrative that we're going through? Right, so p policy plays a really big part of that in terms of uh, attracting investment. Uh, so a couple things on that. One thing I would mention is, is that uh, you know, following 2015, which is when we saw the first kind of major downturn in the industry in Canada, um, we have been operating in a very lean environment for the past few years. So in many ways, we're actually much more nimble than our southern counterparts across the border, which puts us in a very good position. Gotcha. Um, but in terms of policy, you know, we're really looking at the environmental space being the cleanest, uh, the most socially responsible producer of energy in the world, which we are doing. Uh, and that is starting to gain traction from an investment point of view. Of course, cost plays into that, but it's really a balance and if, if cost is the same across the board, um, you know, foreign investment and uh, is going to come in based on good policy in the environmental and social realm. So uh, that's one example, I guess, to kind of further that. One thing that we've been looking at uh, during COVID is methane equivalency. So it was dual regulated before. Um, we, you know, we had federal regulations around methane and provincial. So we've been looking to streamline that just for provincial um, regulation, which we've been successful at in, in a few provinces. So that's that's really good. We're looking for efficiency, and that's what attracts foreign investment, and uh, also, you know, growing our Canadian businesses, our at-home businesses as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask you about what, you know, the world's image is of Canada and Alberta's oil and gas. I know we always hear about the negatives. We very rarely hear about the positives. And, and in, in past episodes, we've talked about some numerous things that we're doing. I mean, we're some of the cleanest, you know, that's out there, despite yeah. this messaging that's been put out there that we're not. Um, and, and so trying to amplify that mm -hmm. has been a real challenge uh, for both Alberta and Canada when it comes to hey like we're we're not the bad guys here like we're actually some of the yeah. better ones out yeah. there and you kind of answered that question in there already so mm -hmm. that's fantastic um, what about like internal refining and and uh, like we're talking a lot about upgraders you talked about the Trans Canada pipeline that's being pushed through um, but for in regards to other projects that we could be working on yeah. are you guys focusing a lot on that uh, like I said for example refinements being done here before it's getting shipped over the border or across you know provinces and, and into other countries how has that kind of conversations been looking yeah so that's really a question about investment and in Canada our business primarily is the upstream mm. um, business so producing and distributing our product for refinement um, you know south of the border we do have some refining capacity in eastern Canada and we do manufacture um, some products here in Alberta but for the most part it's a, it's an upstream equation which we are very good at as uh, you know we've said before we're top five producers um, in terms of volume in mm. the world for both oil and natural gas and and we are not number one across the board in all categories. So um, it's really a, a cost um, issue as to whether or not, you know, the downstream is, is something that will grow in Canada. But right now we're really looking at uh, production and also transportation uh, across Canada into the States and then of course overseas. 
Gotcha. Right on. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming in and joining us, Kelly, and giving us your perspective and, and telling us more about your organization, the great things that you guys are doing. Um, I understand you're going to be uh, uh, working with uh, Economic Developers Alberta here coming up in November. Yeah. That sounds like that's going to be really fantastic. And you're supporting those guys, which is huge. And we appreciate that big time for here in our yeah, province. So thank you so much for that. And again, thank you so much for coming and joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we will see you next week with more Alberta-based business advocacy and innovation.